make decisions fairly fairly fast. You know, we don't wait until we get all the information. We just get enough that we know what's there and, and then decide on the basis. And uh, an example of that is uh, what I'm going to do is flash some playing cards. I'm going to start with very, very quick flashes. And just notice how little information it takes, how, how quick an interval you can really begin to recognize all the cards. Could you get most of those at that speed? Yes. So let's slow it down a little bit. And notice it becomes clearer. Everybody getting them all? Or shall I go, go slowly again? I'm going to go through one more time, and as I do, as each one comes up, just say what it is out loud. Okay. Ace of diamonds. Nine of clubs. Six of hearts. Six of spades. Oh wait, somebody said hearts. Somebody said spades. That was rare. Six of hearts. Oh, those hearts, but they're spades. <laughs> we see yes, what we know how to see. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We yes. see what we know how to see. Very good. This, uh, this experiment was originally done around 1940. And um, what they did was basically uh, kind of about the same directions that I gave you. You know, what we're after is just to see how quickly you can things. They'd slip in a card like the red spade. And uh, it's really interesting the, the, the perceptions that take place over the course of this. Let's see if any of you found any of these. At, at high speeds, at a speed where people are getting you know, half to two, two thirds of the cards correct. Uh, the anomalous card would typically be identified either as a six of spades or a six of hearts. Fairly unambiguous. Uh, seems to depend on whether that particular person is queuing on shape or color. Slow it down a little bit more. And uh, some people will begin to see it as it's a six of hearts, but I'm not sure I locked the door when I left the house this morning. There's, there's something wrong. It doesn't even associate with the experiment. There's just this sense of unease that something is wrong. And so the person starts looking for, you know, did I lock the door? Did I go away, did I go away and leave the, the kettle on the stove or something like that? Slow it down a little bit more. And one of the things that some people start to see is anomalous information in the presentation that isn't there. If they've been seeing this as a six of hearts, they may begin to see it as a six of hearts with black outlines around the hearts. So they're, they're trying to bring in the spadeness of it somehow. And it's coming in as these black outlines. Or if they're seeing it as a six of spades, it'll begin to get gray instead of black. Something's, something is happening. Back when I didn't have quite the high-tech presentation, I had a little set of cards, large cards that I made up like this that I, I flipped for people. And, and it was most interesting doing it with one individual and seeing what their reactions were. And I remember one person once, having said six of spades there, 
Then when an ace of hearts came up as the next card, it said ace of spades. We carried that over. Another thing that happens is, and this also I think has very interesting implications for perception writ, more, writ larger, that once you have identified it as a six of hearts or a six of spades, many people will hold on to that identification for much longer than, you know, for a time interval when they could clearly see what it was if that had been the first time it was presented. In other words, they, have, they know what it is, they've locked in, and they're not going in. I've, I've had this happen again with the cards, where I've actually handed the card to somebody and said, this is the one I'm talking about, and it says, oh, that's a six of hearts. It's still a six of hearts. You know, it's, it's, even once the, once the perception is set, it's hard for it to, uh, 